What's up guys, Eric here with At Home in the Future. We check out the latest gear and gadgets for modern families. Hey, if you dig this video, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. Hey, before we get into this review, I want you to know that the folks at Rad Power Bikes actually partner with us in this review. So although they sent us this bike to check out, everything you're gonna hear from me is my honest opinion. So let's get to it. Okay, so if you're watching this review, you may already be interested in electric bikes or e-bikes. And for good reason, it seems like they are everywhere now. Um, they're starting to get a lot more affordable, the range is nuts, and really like, the power is a big deal. If you want to get in a bike and go explore a city or some back roads, that sort of thing, and not just be drenched in sweat or be exhausted at the end of it, an e-bike is an excellent option. So I've been looking at e-bikes for a while now and checking out all different price ranges and different sizes and everything, but what I kept coming back to was actually this Rad Mini model, and that's for a few reasons. Uh, one. Uh, if you see e-bikes uh, when you're out on a trail or at a campground, you see a ton of Rad Power bikes. Now, there's a few other brands I see popping up, but it seems like these are by far the most popular for some reason. And we'll get to that in a minute. I'll cover some of that in this review. But a uh, super popular brand that seems like they have a really, really good reputation. Um, also, I love that this thing is actually uh, fairly portable for what it is. E-bikes in and of themselves maybe aren't all that portable. They're kind of heavy and big. But this one actually folds and has some really cool things we'll go over in this review, so that's worth checking out. But also, this thing is at a great price. Um, it's not the bottom of the barrel, but it's definitely not the high end either. It's kind of that mid-range at around $1,500 plus the accessories, but definitely worth checking out. So let's get into this uh, review and check out why I think the Rad Mini is such a cool bike. So right from the get-go when this thing came in the mail, you can tell it's something special. Even the box art on these Rad Bikes is actually really cool with this kind of mosaic thing that uh, it looks like they actually even ran a coloring contest for it because the art's so cool. But anyway, pulling this thing open, it comes uh, mostly assembled. Now, I will say um, they estimate it could take maybe 30 minutes or so to assemble it. I'm not a bike person at all, but it did take me a full hour of dragging the parts out, dragging the bike out, getting the tools and everything. Uh, but it really wasn't too bad overall. So it comes with a little toolkit, and better yet, it comes with a full YouTube video that walks you through every single step in a totally brainless way, showing you where the screws go, what to do next, what when to unbox certain things, um, and that was super helpful for me. So all in all, it took me about an hour. It probably would have taken a little less time if I actually took their advice and got uh, my wife or somebody else to, to help me out, but I was an idiot and tried to lift stuff myself and do stuff myself, which made it a little bit more difficult. But overall, setting it up wasn't too bad except for one thing. Uh, now, with this bike, I actually ordered uh, racks to go on this. You can see the orange rack here on the back. And that rack is super cool, but I gotta tell you, it was a giant pain in the butt to get it on there. Uh, I don't know if uh, it was bad hardware or the machining was off or the holes and everything, but it took me probably overall four or five hours of first putting it on and stripping some screws, and then uh, coming back to it a few days later after I went to the hardware store with some better uh, hardware to try to put it on. I finally got it on there, but that was such a pain that uh, the really cool front rack I ordered with the two, I haven't even attempted to put it on yet. Uh, but just know that if you're going in, the bike will go together easy. If you add some other accessories, it could be a little tricky to get things on. Before we go over what it's like to actually ride this thing, I want to give you a full tour of all the features that are included in this bike. Uh, so first things first, let's check out uh, the battery here. This whole uh, long unit is actually a removable battery where you pop in your key here, you turn that, and you can actually slide that whole unit off. And that's great if you're going in a store or parking it long-term somewhere, because a lot of times if people are gonna try to steal this bike, they, they want the battery, it's kind of half the value of it. So really easy to take on and off, it's super easy to charge. Uh, the charging point port is actually here um, on the other side, and you just uh, flip out this little USB thing in and plug it in. Um, and it charges pretty quickly too. Uh, you can just leave it plugged in for a few hours and you'll be good to go. And there's also this battery indicator in the back here that will tell you how much uh, charge it has. So um, the folding mechanism for the bike, again, this is a uh, folding model, um, which is really great. Uh, you have this main clasp right here. It's got the super tough, not going anywhere. It's not gonna unfold while you're riding it, but the super tough mechanism here um, where you fold this out, you pull it over, lift it up to start the folding process. Um, you control the seat with this folding mechanism here and that clasp, and we'll go back around this other side here. But you can see um, this pronounced lever here where you have a little safety on it and pull that down that actually lowers the stem. So um, actually folding this thing up is fairly easy. It's still heavy to kind of fold it in half, but uh, not too bad. So this is that uh, rear rack. Um, there was an accessory that I installed on here. Uh, you can see I've got these little bungee ties that I use if I have uh, a container or something and I need to you know, tie to it at the campground as I'm driving around with it. Uh, but a really great feature to have. Uh, these nice uh, fenders, big and wide, um, for these giant wheels to keep uh, mud and water and everything off you. 
Um, again, a nice touch, um, full LED headlight, or I'm sorry, a full LED tail light here. Um, it's nice when you're driving at night, a little bit of extra security. Uh, big, beefy uh, kickstand, probably the biggest kickstand you'll see on a bicycle like this. Uh, great. You can see some of the disc brakes here in the back and the rear hub motor, uh, which is really cool. Uh, something to note about these tires um, before we leave that topic. They're really nice, like I said, really beefy and thick, but this uh, rim that goes all the way around is completely reflective. Um, so at night, you get this one thing that looks cool. You get these big two giant circles uh, from the side. Uh, it's a little bit of extra security, um, but those are awesome uh, just for our safety uh, for safety purposes. Big shocks here at the front. Again, it handles um, going over speed bumps and any sort of like curbs and dips and all that stuff handles that really well. Um, this headlight, the stock headlight's actually uh, pretty great and really fun. Sometimes it gets a little, I just maybe not have it tightened enough, but sometimes uh, where you attach it, it'll get sideways when you fold it and store it and stuff. But really cool. looks awesome. This whole thing uh, lights up. Uh, really impressive appearance and neat. I love the badge here on the front of this. And you'll see these screws here. Uh, that front rack that I mentioned, um, that's where you would attach that um, on the bike. Again, I haven't attempted that because some of the trouble I had getting the back, <laughs> the back rack on, but uh, we'll try that again soon. All right, so up here in the handlebars uh, themselves, you have um, these nice brakes on both sides. Um, you have the shifting system, which um, I've, it's been okay. Um, it's a little strange to go up in gears. You push this uh, to go down. You push this in. Both are controlled with your thumbs. I found it a little finicky, just not what I'm used to. Um, but I'm not a, a giant bike guy either, but still super easy to use. Um, really nice. We'll go over the center control panel here in just a second. Um, this actually, I've seen nobody cover this, <laughs> either uh, just online in blog reviews or anything else. But the bell built in here, here's what it sounds like. Really nice, really tiny. Um, the handlebars, I kind of uh, bend down a little bit, so you may have a little bit of trouble attaching stuff like a phone mount. I found the best spot is right up against um, these side things, really right over here. If you're gonna put a phone mount or a GoPro mount, that's where to put it, so. Uh, but the main controls for this unit, I'll try to get where the sun's not shining right on it. You can see it a little bit there. So you have uh, your battery life indicator, your miles per hour, it'll show you how fast you're going, the wads you're using so you can see how hard you're hitting the battery, uh, your pedal assist mode, and then your odometer, both the trip mode and just the overall odometer. So uh, the big thing to pay attention to is this pedal assist area right here. So this is where you control it. You can push up and down. I'm gonna push this up arrow and cycle through, but you'll see those levels go up and down. Um, and it'll kind of show you how much um, of a boost you're getting from those. That's an overview of how this bike works. Let's get to how it rides. So what's it like to actually ride the Rad Mini 4? In a word, it's totally awesome. Uh, but it does take a little bit of getting used to if you're not used to an electric bike and maybe just have a mountain bike or something like that. So um, like I showed you a few minutes ago going over the bike, there's five different modes, those pedal assist modes that you can use. One is almost like um, you're not using basically any electricity at all. It just feels kind of like riding a normal bike. Maybe a little bit of extra pep that you're not used to, but you'll find yourself cycling through gears like you normally would. Um, two and three are really kind of the sweet spot for me. They say that two is eco mode, um, but I found with two that I still really wasn't having to pedal all that much and it felt like I had more of a boost than I would with a normal bike. Uh, three for me was like the speed that I was on most of the time. Uh, so that's the pedal assist mode that I feel like I'm putting very little effort, still powers through hills, it still does all those things, um, but more than enough speed. It seems like it's so easy to get up to 16 or 17 miles an hour, especially if you're going flat, um, almost comically easy. So four and five are the power modes and those things, I found myself honestly not using them all too often because there is so much gas that you pedal just a little bit and it's almost like it kicks you back in your seat and that motor kicks in. Um, it doesn't feel dangerous or out of control, but it's so much power, it's probably kind of ludicrous. And I found myself, you know, going back and forth between two and three, um, just knowing that I'd be easier on the battery and I feel like a, a better riding experience for me. So there's also the throttle, which is totally awesome. You can go from stop, hit that thing, get up to, you know, 18, 20 miles an hour, especially if you're going flat, no problem at all. Where I found myself using that the most, though, is actually going up hills. It's kind of like having a cheat mode or a lazy mode because you get to that bottom of that hill and where you normally switch gears and try to, you know, just burn your legs going through it. I found myself just hitting the gas in that throttle and flying up the hill, which is awesome. In my mind, that's one of the number one reasons to have an e-bike like this is that made those hills absolutely nothing and made the range just insane. So the Rad Mini does have a really great front suspension, which is awesome for going over bumps or speed bumps or just minor things like that. You could probably really go off-road fairly good with it. Maybe not crazy with it, but any park that was around or driving through, um, it handled that with aplomb. Totally awesome. 
So the suspension was great. Uh, the range is absolutely nuts. I'll just be totally honest here. I've been dozens and dozens and dozens of miles in this thing. And I don't even know if I've seen it go past. It may have hit like the four out of five battery mark once. It just plows through stuff. They say the range is about 40 miles and I totally believe it, especially if you're using one of the lower pedal assist modes. So range is something, unless you're using this thing to commute or just go crazy long distances, I don't think you'll ever have to worry about it. I found myself absolutely loving the fat tires uh, on the Rad Mini. Even though they're just 20 inch fat tires, they're still really big and you can kind of take curves and just leisurely drive this thing and weave around almost like you're riding a motorcycle. And then the brakes were really good too. So that was one thing I was concerned about with an e-bike, being able to go so fast and have so much pep. Could this thing actually stop? Now, it's still a young bike for me, so it's a little squeaky, but this thing seems to stop on a dime. I never felt like I had any trouble slowing down or coming to a complete stop. A big advantage of having the Rad Mini 4 is the portability. So it's still an e-bike, it's still heavy. It's probably around 65 pounds, especially with the rack on there and everything. So it's really still a two-person job taking this thing around. But because it folds, it's a lot easier to pack down and take with you, especially if you have like an SUV or something. Uh, what I found myself doing, even though I have a truck, is I got one of those big Rubbermaid totes. So whenever I take my Rad Mini to the campground or out to a bike trail or something, I'll fold it up, I'll put it in this big 50 gallon Rubbermaid tote that I have, and I'll put that in the back of my truck or in the back of the SUV, and it makes carrying around quite a bit easier. So um, I will say this thing doesn't fold up maybe as tiny as um, any other folding bike you might be used to if you have one of those. So we have another smaller, just regular folding bike and this is still a really large bike, even when you fold it. So if you're wanting something super tiny, uh, for one thing that probably doesn't exist in an e-bike, but this, as far as e-bikes go, is the most portable, uh, compressible, easy to maneuver solution I've found out there. So I think for that reason, it's definitely worth checking out if that's important to you. All right, so I have to admit, one of my biggest concerns with having an awesome e-bike like this is actually securing the thing. If you go on any forum or do like a search for this or get on any of the Facebook groups, that's like the thing people talk about all the time. Now, I don't live in a big city, but apparently these things are like gold for thieves. They take the batteries, they take everything else. So long story short, I was really concerned about trying to find a good way to secure it wherever I'm at. So what I ended up going with is this really strong chain lock from the folks at CD Lock. Uh, I believe this is called the Viking chain. And this thing is absolutely awesome. and <laughs> just absolutely bulletproof too. It's got a nice neoprene cover on it that protects your paint and everything. Has a crazy uh, lock mechanism on here that's actually magnetic and lines up. But more importantly, it's rated as a gold uh, rated lock. So here, somewhere on the chain, it'll tell you about it. Uh, but that means is that uh, somebody, unlike a cable lock or unlike maybe even like a folding lock you get with these chains, chain locks like that, somebody's not just gonna come through with bolt cutters or even an angle grinder in like 10 seconds and take this thing off. It's gonna take them a lot of time with that angle grinder and a lot of noise to get through this thing. It's actually long enough to wrap around uh, the front bumper of my camper. So it's really easy for me to secure when we're camping or out. And you can just wrap it around your waist too um, when you travel around to go to the bathhouse or go in the city for a little bit. So probably still don't want to leave this thing unattended for too long or leave it parked outside overnight. But having an awesome lock like the CD Lock Viking is definitely something you want to get if you're going to get a bike like this. So it's probably pretty obvious at this point that our honest opinion of this thing is we have a ton of fun with it and absolutely love it. But there are a few downsides I want to mention. Uh, the first, like you've heard me kind of already hit a few times, uh, E-bikes are big. Even though this is a mini bike and it's foldable and everything, it's still big, it's still heavy. So um, if you're looking at e-bikes and um, you're wanting something that's as light as your mountain bike or something to tote around, but one thing that probably, again, that does not exist in the e-bike world really, uh, but this thing, even though it is still um, easy to pack around, it's still, uh, it's still heavy, it's still pretty big. Uh, you still wanna make sure you have a good space to store it. So keep that in mind if you're checking it out. Another thing to consider is the wheel size. So again, these wheels are actually fairly big compared to, I have another bike that has 20 inch wheels but because these, these big beefy uh, fat tire wheels are still fairly large. But uh, again, if you're used to a larger mountain bike or something that has a larger diameter wheel, um, you will occasionally notice that 20 inch wheel going over bumps or maybe hitting potholes. There's not as much uh, surface area to handle that stuff. It's still more than enough and it's probably will never be an issue for you, but that's something just worth considering. If you want a bigger wheel size, uh, Rad Power Bikes actually has a really cool Rad Rover bike. Um, that I'm hoping to check out at some point because those look pretty cool too. Uh, but it's a much larger wheel. It doesn't fold or anything, but that's more of a full size bike. And that may be a consideration for you if wheel size is important. All right, one final thing to consider as we wrap up this review, and this really isn't with the Rad Mini itself, but just e-bikes in general, I guess. But because of how powerful the motor is in this thing, it can almost be too easy sometimes. So I found myself uh, very occasionally just being like, oh, you know, I rode a bike all day, but I don't feel like I've had a workout or I burned a lot of calories. Now, it's probably because I was just using the high pedal assist mode, but unless you're using like a one or two, I found myself not exerting much energy at all, which is both awesome, that may be what you're looking for, and kind of a drawback if you enjoy getting your blood pumping and kind of getting that feeling. Uh, 
It's especially noticeable if you're riding with your family or with other people that are on regular bikes because you'll just be flying through stuff or tearing through a trail and they're just beat <laughs> and you're totally uh, still amped up and still have all your energy. So um, too powerful for its own good? I don't think so, but if you're looking for something to get a lot of exercise, uh, this may not be the bike for you. All right, so what's the final verdict of this thing? I'm gonna give you my honest opinion after spending a month and a half with it and riding it all over the place. And that is, it's absolutely awesome. <laughs> it's, it's so much fun to ride. Um, it's portable enough uh, that it makes it easy to take it along on camping trips and pretty much any adventure we have. Um, it's so smooth, the suspension is great. Um, it feels like what you always hoped like a really souped up bike would feel like. It's just so much fun to ride. Uh, the range is absolutely nuts. But more importantly, it gives you that e-bike experience in a portable form factor at a price that's super reasonable. Again, around $1,500. Um, now it comes from the folks at Rad Power Bikes, which just have a great reputation. The customer service is great. I mentioned earlier in that review that that rack was hard to get on. They sent me all sorts of emails and offered to pair me to bike shops. They were just so responsive. But for, for the money and for the build quality and everything else about this thing, I don't think you'll find a better e-bike, especially if this is your first e-bike this is definitely the one to consider. All right, if you wanna learn more about the Rad Mini 4 or the Step Through model or any of those Rad Power bikes, make sure you check out the link in the screen. They have a ton of really cool products and really cool accessories. Uh, so if you plan on getting one of these things, definitely go check things out there. I hope this review has been super helpful to you. If you dig this video, be sure to hit that like button. It helps the channel out a ton. And don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. We'll see you next time.